Yirashimase! Hello and welcome to Fataris' Kitchen. I'm your host, Chef Fataris. It's time once again for Shoot 'em Up Saturday, and on the menu this Saturday, we have Twin B, Konami's 1985 arcade classic. What kind of taste will it have? Let's get cooking and find out. Originally releasing to arcades in 1985, Twin B is a game that would be ported to over a dozen different systems. Now in 2019, it's available as an arcade archive title for the Nintendo Switch. This isn't the first time it's actually available for the Switch, as it was released as part of the Nintendo Online Services NES titles that are available. So there is that if you want to play the NES port. But if you're looking to play the arcade version, that's now available on the Switch. It has been available for a few years years on the PlayStation 4, so if you're looking to play this version, you can also do that. Twin B is a game that has a lot of nostalgia for me. I've covered the NES port before, but I wanted to experience the arcade version as well, as I really hadn't played it, so although it is interesting and a bit different from the NES port. So as an example, here we find ourselves at the main menu of the Arcade Archive. So there are a couple different versions of the game on this release. There's the ROM version, which is the one that you would typically expect for an arcade title, but there's also the bubble system, which is interesting. The bubble system was this Konami system that used bubble memory, basically a magnetic uh, form of storage, think kind of like a tape or something like that, um, that saw four total arcade titles released for it. Of course, today we'll be looking at the ROM version, and part of that is, well, for one thing, the, that has less loading time, since the bubble uh, system did use a magnetic form of storage, it had to read in the magnetic data, so there was a little bit more loading time. But we still have this warming up screen, regardless of which version you're playing, including the famous Konami morning music that plays in that loading screen. So, firing up Twin B, you're playing as either the Twin B or the Win B if you're playing as the second player. Uh, both players can play simultaneously, and it has the typical cute em up, shoot em up style that uh, Twin B has become known for. Um, the vertical scrolling shoot em up that just is. Well, for me, this is one of my um, first uh, vertical scrolling shoot 'em up experiences from like years and years ago, and it really does have a lot of nostalgia for me. So as far as attacks are concerned, we have our aerial shot and our ground shot. The ground shot is used to hit enemies that are enemy turrets that are on the ground, and of course, the air shot takes out your air. So one thing that we're able to do for both points and our upgrades are the bells. Uh, Twin B's uh, like, uh, bell system is one that I've really enjoyed for power-ups. So as you shoot clouds, sometimes some of the clouds will have bells inside them. And you can continue to shoot those bells till the shot, or rather the bells, become different colors. Based on like uh, the colors, if you pick that up, you'll get certain power-ups. So in the first in the cycle, we get the white bell, which gives us a dual shot. Then we continue on past that, you get to the blue bells, which will give you uh, speed up. And uh, this this game is insane in that you can speed up up to 16 times after the blue bell we come to the green bell which will give you an option like uh, doppelgangers where you have uh, several shadow copies of your ship that follow after you shooting shots and throwing bombs at the enemy that was our first boss onion head there and uh lastly we come to the barrier which is what i've got right now when you pick that up you get a barrier but you also get a whole bunch of eggs that try and take away your barrier it's uh, actually pretty brutal um, so that first boss there was Onion Head, um, and I didn't actually know that's what its name was until playing this version. The reason I can tell that that's its name is this version has digitized speech. The arcade version had a speech synthesizer on it, so that's something that's just a really neat little touch. 
In addition to that, other differences between this and the more commonly known uh, NES and MSX ports, um, we also have uh, just in general better graphics. So this has always been a favorite. The second stage has always been a favorite of mine. Uh, where partially because of just the bizarreness of the enemies. We have these knives that are attacking us, there's forks that are attacking us, and what I thought were plates, but uh, in the higher uh, detail, like sprites, I can tell that they're actually like alien ships, not so much like uh, the saucers, or rather the plates, that I thought them to be. Oh, so just a note about the bells. If you're looking to collect big points you can just collect the bells in their yellow form as long as you don't let any drop off the bottom of the screen they'll continually increase in points up to 10,000 points uh, which can actually be pretty huge because your first um, one up is at uh, 20,000 points and then I believe from there it goes to 140 but that's all that we can get uh, under like usually the base circumstances uh, one thing that is nice about the arcade archive version as always oh if we get a couple bells off the ground then we get this uh, ball which moves around and helps damage the enemies uh, one thing that's nice about the arcade archive uh, version is oh. Oh, forgot where I was at anyway we're at the second like uh, boss now so I really, really like the way that this boss uh, comes in, kind of like scaling out of the background. Um, but this boss fight itself sucks because we have all these randomly spawning bubbles that are attacking us from all quarters. So one thing that I was going to say was, is nice about the Arcade Archive version is, as always, we have the difficulty settings that we can alter. Um, it's possible to increase your number of starting lives, change the... Um, continue points as well as um, the difficulty so there are a few different difficulty settings which you can mess around with that was something that is not present on the home ports of uh, Twinby. yay we're able to get another barrier all right so that'll basically that's basically what we have here with the arcade archive version of Twinbee and just like Twinbee in general. This, like I mentioned, this is definitely one of those titles I have a lot of nostalgia for. So even if it's uh, kind of a difficult like uh, shoot 'em up and one that can be frustrating, it's one that I still have a lot of fun with. But what do we have as far as minus flavors are concerned? I'm not a fan of the fact it doesn't have any way to continue. If you get a game over, you will start the game again from the very beginning. There's no way to start from a stage that you would happen to have got to. Then there's also just the uh, problem that this game has with... Uh, the power down when you die. It's not very easy to recover from deaths in later stages and in fact you will likely just repeatedly die until you get a game over once you've uh, lost a life. Uh, that's just frustrating and but uh, this isn't the only shoot 'em up to experience that kind of uh, issue but the fact that you can't uh, continue does make it a little bit worse for this one. As far as the plus flavors are concerned, once again, it's twin beef. Uh, to me, that means a lot, and um, even if it's not like a perfect shoot 'em up, uh, it's one that I do have uh, of really like uh, fond memories of in my heart. Oh, this section of the game is a little bit different than I remember it. All right, well, that'll just about wrap it up for this week's episode of Shoot 'em Up Saturday. As always, I want to thank you so much for coming out and joining me this week. And I look forward to seeing you again next week.